What's up, Mr. Jeff, the custodian? It's been a while since I've posted any videos and had a whole lot going on that I could video and post for it to be anything worth a flip. Today, I'm going to show you how to strip floors with a 3M pad and a 20 inch slow speed buffer. Um, here at the college, I don't have the equipment that I once had at the school to work with. I don't have a square scrub, and I refuse to do any chemical stripping anymore. I've done that for years, and there is a better way. There's an easier way, and you may not agree with this way of stripping. You may think it's hogwash, but I'm here to tell you, it does a fantastic job. As long as you have stripped the floor, or it has been stripped the correct way, with wet stripping from the beginning uh, because what you're doing is I'm taking about three coats of wax off, I'm taking the dirt off, and I'm leaving the base coat down on the floor. But I can promise you this floor, when I get done with it, stripping it, it looks chalky. It is uh, ready to put wax on. So what I'm doing is I'm going to strip these floors and I'm gonna put about eight coats of wax on this floor because uh, we do not strip and wax floors every year here. Uh, there's really no reason in it. It doesn't have the traffic that uh, a regular elementary school or any other public school setting, high school, daycares, places like that have. Uh, I'm personally one of the people that thinks that you can do overkill on stripping and waxing. So I'm going to, uh, strip this floor, do the eight coats, and it's going to be very easy to maintain from now on and to keep buffed. So here we go. Okay, we're gonna strip a classroom floor today in a way that uh, I've talked about before. You know, you have seen the videos that I've made of stripping uh, with a square scrub machine with a 3M pad. But today we're gonna to strip with a round slow speed with a 3M pad and water only. Let's take a look at this floor. This floor has been uh, not stripped in several, several years. And it's pretty bad shape. So I'm going to show you using a 3M pad and water uh, and around slow speed, how we're gonna strip this floor. This is one of those times where you gotta use what you got. And uh, this is not the best machine in the world, but I can't talk them into buying me a round machine and I am not chemical stripping anymore. Uh, I've got my son here with me today and he's gonna help me out. Got him getting spider webs down. The room is cleaned out. So this is a good time to go ahead and get spider webs, do high work, anything you wanna do before you strip your floor. So here we go. Because you prep your floor just like you always would, whether you're wet stripping or you're stripping with 3M and water. I always dust mop the floor first. It's pretty common sense, but it, I always like to say stuff that uh, I, uh, you know sometimes I take for granted for people that's maybe new in the business. If you're like me, you do that uh, set of keys and a badge and a radio, and you gotta kind of figure it out on your own. We all know that's what this channel's about, is to help you out. Okay, the setup for these. Uh, to set up these uh, machines, I'm going to be using uh, the automatic scrubber, mop machine, whatever you want to call it. But what I have learned is this, that if you use a round one, is go ahead and take a white pad, red pad, whatever you want. And I go ahead and use a uh, 3M pad on my mop machine. The reason that is, is because I have figured out if you use something like a white pad, anything, it's going to kind of but the floor out because what I'm doing is I'm taking three coats of wax off and I'm going to put more wax on and my base coats are going to stay on there. All I'm doing is getting the dirt, the grub, and everything is going to turn a chalky white. I am taking layers of wax off. This is not a regular top scrub. Uh, we are taking wax off the floor as well, but we are going to leave our base coats on. We're not going all the way down to the top. So. Good idea if you're using a round machine to use a 3M on your rinse as well. That way you're still taking wax off, plus you're not leaving a shiny 
film on the floor at all. Okay. On uh, this particular machine, it has a brush pad holder, uh, bristles. It doesn't have the plastic uh, little knobs. So I'm just going to directly on this machine just lay the three of them pad on there. Uh, you can use a pad in between it if you prefer, but uh, I'm going to do this one with just the straight 3M pad since that is a regular scrub brush as well. Okay, how long will these pads last? Well, in this room right here, I would probably do two to three rooms with a room like this, uh, the way it looks. So the next step is, is I'm going to put water down like stripper. There's no really correct way Put this water down you don't want it just soaking wet it doesn't have to soak there's not a 20 30 minute process of uh of processing time like there is stripper we're just putting water on there we're going to go straight to work on it as soon as we put the water on there uh, my thing is is i like to start at the back of the room work toward the door uh, i saw any way you're doing it i do work into the water just like i was going to work into the stripper i don't start at the back corner i want to pin myself against the wall work out floor could still be slippery because you are working with a wet floor, just not as slippery as regular stripper. So, here we go. Alright, I'm going to put this down basically like stripper. I'm just going to kind of, I'm not going to ring my mop. And I'm going to kind of stay away from the edge. What's really fun about this is this is a wood baseboard. So I've got to really watch the baseboard with that round pad. It's going to be real funny trying to stay out of the place. I'm not going to soak the whole room uh, because the very reason I'm not is that it will dry. And you can think about stripping forward this way is, is if something happens and I have to leave this, I don't have to worry about it. Even picking it up, I can leave this white powder on the floor and it can completely dry without me having to uh, worry about it or re dry on the floor. This, this is very forgiving on stripping. I'm going to take my time on this because one thing I've got the time, the other thing is, is that the uh, floor is in pretty bad shape. Now I'm going to show you something that you can do. It's not going to hurt anything up the middle. I kind of do this to be able to pick up water. If I need it, because I get one good slam, kind of like a little stripper. I'm going to get my pad wet when I storm it. So, water there. And here we go. And I'm telling you guys, this machine right here is a it's a rough one. So you don't have to have a test to put it, but it should have been I don't have to do it. So, most y'all guys don't have a very good one. Kind of soapy, and not so hot from the pan off in the past room. The stuff on the floor. Oh, wax is coming up off the floor. machine and pulling the trigger on it, it may stuck to the floor, leaving a circle on the floor. Reading that, I seen a guy really get hurt with one of these one time. He was new, didn't really know, and he took. We took a break, and he let his pad sit on the floor like this. 
and we'd been gone about 30 minutes. He come back and grabbed my handle before I could get out of my mouth. Don't turn the machine on. Just so he was standing in the hallway and there was just a little bit of a stripper that had run out. He had his foot in it. When he grabbed that handle and stuck to the floor, it jerked. His feet went out from under him. He hit his head on the locker, busted his head. Yeah, it was bad. He was laying in a stripper. So he really get hurt. Okay. And it's something more around the edges where your machine can't get. Okay, this is the strip side, and there's still some wet. I haven't rinsed the edges or anything yet. I'm gonna do that on the final step. As you see the shine in the dirt, it's still on this side. It's kind of hard to tell in the video, but there is, there is a significant difference. You can see right there. And all I used was 3M pad and water. You know, so lights are not really shining in the floor right here anymore. One of the good thing about this is, is when I get done with this, immediately when the floor is dry, I'm ready to apply wax. There's no chemical change, no pH level change, or anything in this floor. Got my 13 year old boy running it. So, if you're new, don't be intimidated. He's a natural. This is his first time to run one. That's some water I squeegeed out around that podium right there. How nasty it is. I just want to show you right here, this is a uh, dried wax where I got wax off the floor. Then what you want to do is you want to rinse the floor until you don't have any of that. See, I haven't rinsed, second rinse this. But I'm actually gonna scrub, got my finger in the way. I'm actually gonna scrub the whole floor one more time. Cause I've got some patches I'm just not happy with. With chairs that rubbed and stuff. I've also had to do that before with the chemical stripping where I've had buildup. I've had to strip a room two, maybe three times. So I'm gonna scrub it all one more time. I'm gonna flip my pad over because I want it to all be more like this right here because it's still wet. Makes it look patchy as well. I don't care if you're wet stripping with the chemical or you're just stripping like this with water in a 3M. A good double-sided foam squeegee is one of your best friends because you can go in there and pull the water away from the edge. And that way your auto scrubber can just go by and pick it up. It saves a lot of work. This is the second time around the podium. See, I got all the dirt off the floor. And that makes a huge difference going over the second time. Cause I finally got the dirt off. And I can really get down there and penetrate getting my wax off. Before I do my final rinse, I am going to uh, rinse my edges. That way my final rinse will be complete. Allow the floor to dry. Be ready for wax. Okay, let's test it out. Let's see if there's any 
clean, except for the little bit I got on my glove from stripping, but yeah. And we all have different methods that we, the way we wax. Some of us use backpack systems, some of us use a bucket. Uh, doesn't matter what you use as long as it's clean. We're not gonna get into, oh, this is right, this is wrong. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a uh, microfiber method on a bucket, small room, this is all I got in the wax right now. Try to uh, save on the cost of wax. Uh, try not to waste any chemical. I've set the temperature in here at 65 degrees. In Alabama, we have a lot of humidity. We just had some rain. So we want this room to dry really good. Try not to gurgle. There's different methods of doing this too. I've done a video on kind of waxing before. Uh, hopefully most everybody knows how to wax. If you've got a veteran with you that knows how to wax. But I'm gonna do a coat on the edges and I'm gonna work my way when I can reach the mark all the way over to that wall and come out right here and go out the door. So I'm gonna preload my, my I'm not gonna just ram it all the way down in the wax. I'm just gonna kind of get my pad wet, okay? I really don't want it dripping. You just take your time with this. It's not dripping, but it's, it's preloaded. And if I leave it sitting there, yes, it's gonna do it. But I'm gonna go straight to my edge, preloaded mop. And what I'm gonna do is I know I'm gonna get to this area right here I'm not gonna go all the way to that corner yet because I don't want to overlap this mop and pull a chunk out. So I'm gonna start about right here in this plug, give me a mark, and I'm just gonna walk. Get up in my corner good. And I'm gonna go about to this plug right here with my width. I'm gonna preload again. And I'm going to overlap about an inch, and we'll go again. And I'm just going to walk. Nice, even coats. I'm going to look at my mop that I can go back toward the bucket and load again. You just continue this pattern until you get to the door. When we start the direction toward the door, I'll show you how that works. Okay, I've got my one coat where I work my way this way. Now I'm going to work this in this direction, like this, to go out the door. I'm going to be lapping over where I have waxed already. I'm not going to lap over much because I'm going to pull out a chunk in case it started drying. The zoom edge, get up in my corner. I'm gonna go ahead and slap a little. If you feel it dragging or pulling, just back off from it. You notice I'm not loading my mop every time with this because I'm not covering as much floor. And what I'm gonna do is I'll show you on the next time is I'm gonna change directions. That way we don't have a preload by loading mop starting in the same place every time you get a build up. And plus, it helps cover the floor and hide streaks there. Now what I'm gonna do right here, is I'm right here for the door, is I'm going to preload my mop, kind of squeeze it out, I'm just gonna sit here for one second, and I'm gonna roll this out here on the rug that I put out here in the hall to keep it dripping on my hall floor. And I just work my way 
out the door. Making sure that I step on my rug if I got any wax on my feet. Try to keep my edge right up to the threshold, nice and clean. See, I just dripped some wax, so I'm glad my rug was there. Now we go eat lunch, wait an hour. <clears throat> and I always put you a sign up about it where you're waxing. Sometimes it does some good, sometimes it don't. Well, it's been an hour and it ain't dry. So what you gonna do now? Eat some corn nuts. <laughs> While it dries. Got one coat of wax on. It took it almost two hours to dry. But what I'm going to do in this second coat is, is I'm not going to do my edges. The reason I'm not going to do my edges is people don't walk along the edges. It's in a classroom. I will put a coat around my edges again on the very last coat. So what I'm going to do instead of working from here to that direction like I did before, I'm going to work this way toward this wall. And work my way toward the door. I'm just going to change directions as much as possible to keep from getting the build up when my mop is loaded. Okay, one of the good things about not using stripper is this has been sitting in this machine for three hours almost, two and a half hours. And if you use a regular stripper, you wouldn't want that to happen. But this just shows you what it got off the floor. It's pretty nasty. Here we go. Drop the hole. See that gray? That's wax. So it makes you clean up a whole lot easier also. You gotta worry about the corrosion problem or anything like that. It's not hard on your equipment. Okay, I decided to just go with six coats because I got the results that I wanted on my floor. So, no chemical stripping I did here. It was all with a 3M pad and water. And I am very, very pleased with the results with this VCT tile. I mean, it, it pops. So there you have it. Hopefully that made some sense to you. I did cut some uh, video footage out because I was trying to talk and the machine overtook the power of my talking with its noise. So, this is my son. He's a big grinner, as you can tell. He's grinning a whole lot. <laughs> he helped me out a whole bunch. Helped me move tables. He done video for me. Uh, got water for me. We sat around ate corn nuts and played uh, games on our phones tablets and all that good stuff while we wait for wax dry that was good fun a couple of days so go out there and strip and wax some floors because somebody's going to go in there and scratch them up for you when them teachers want to come back and drag furniture across the floor right <laughs> see ya so please like and subscribe when we don't go to the dogs say hey Fritz say hey he just wants a biscuit